Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to continue to have a detailed look at Storm Kieran as today we have seen amber warnings now issued for winds for southeast England, southwest England and the stretch between those two regions along the south coast. It is looking likely now that those areas will be the positions to see those severe gales of 70 to 80 miles per hour pretty widely in the amber warning zone, maybe even locally 90 and there is the risk of 100 right in exposed areas but most likely now out in the english channel we've got widespread yellow warnings issued not only for wind and uh, but also for rain as we are going to see some very heavy rain at times but it's going to be nowhere near as severe as storm babette in terms of rainfall but still could cause issues as the ground is extremely saturated so in this video we'll run through the latest uh, from the live radar as we do have heavy rain moving in tonight as we're seeing the initial weather fronts associated with the general low pressure out in the Atlantic where Storm Babette is f forming within it tonight and then we'll have a look at the latest weather warnings looking at all the yellow warnings over the next few days and of course those amber warnings issued for much of Thursday with for Storm Kieran and then we'll have a look at six charts uh looking at the precipitation on the ukv and the wind and then have a look at the wind on the arpege icon the ecmwf the gfs and the arome run as well so we have to have a very detailed look at what is the most likely top wind gusts and where is the location of those top wind gusts uh likely to be as well so do remember if you enjoy my videos which do like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in the description now in yesterday's video we saw that much uh, many of the models throughout the day did push the storm slightly further northwards now today they've shifted slightly southwards a very small adjustment but that is why the amber warnings today have been updated only for southeast england southwest england and a slither along the south coast so it is looking likely now that areas like London's sort of M4 line will see 50, maybe 60 miles per hour, and a small chance if we still see that northern correction of around 70 miles per hour. But the likely area for those 70, 80 mile per hour wind gusts, which will be very disruptive, could even warrant an, a red warning tomorrow if the likelihood does increase and we see more cross model consensus, is primarily, as I said, in those southeast and southwest corners. We're still seeing a lot of variability in the runs today, as we'll see in a couple of minutes' time, where there is still quite a bit of shift uh, going on from some of the runs, but the majority and the main consensus now is for the southwest and southeast to get smashed the far south coast to see very strong winds uncertain just how strong they will get inland seeing a couple uh, periods of very strong winds nothing ridiculous but very strong so 50 60 mile per hour gusts uh, initially on the leading edge on on and on the back side as well because the center of the low is going to be passing through central england so do have a look at the live radar. You can see the we've got precipitation coming in from the southwest at the moment. Heavy rain moving in, but it's nothing too severe. Um, and it's because we've got that initial weather front coming in associated with the general low sat out well to our west. Uh, and Storm Kieran riding the jet stream out in the Atlantic at the moment. So this isn't Storm Kieran here. This is a weather front associated of general low pressure storm kieran is still well out in the atlantic now if you look at the temperatures as around half seven it's a relatively mild day in the south but you can see quite cold air across scotland that temperature contrast is fueling storm kieran and uh, the jet stream in general and it is giving quite a temperature contrast across the uk and even the areas in the south where temperatures are in the low teens or even touching 14 15 degrees today it still has a, had a chillier feel to it uh, today and over the last few days in general uh, not only as we are of course descending towards winter but because that cold air is moving in now do have a look at the all important weather warnings now we've got one weather warning issued for the rest of today and it's from 9 p.m tonight until 9 a.m tomorrow it's for that weather front we're seeing in the southwest at the moment uh, and it is uh, across northern ireland here another period of heavy rain is likely to bring some flooding and travel uh, disruption across northern ireland rainfall total was, uh, has been updated rainfall total is expected to be higher particularly in the east and will follow a very wet spell on monday night remember we saw amber warnings issued yesterday and that's why i think a yellow warning has been issued here uh, and not in other areas 
and that is because this specific location is very saturated. We're looking at 15 to 25 millimeters, locally 30 to 50 millimeters, so not huge amounts, but as I said, on top of saturated ground, could continue to cause issues. Now into tomorrow, we still have that yellow warning for Northern Ireland, and then we start to see warnings for Storm Kieran starting to come into force. Now we've got this stretch across Scotland here. It's from 3 a.m. tomorrow until 3 p.m., and again, it's for the remnants of that weather front that will continue to give some heavy rain in places, 20, 30 millimetres widely, 40 to 50 millimetres in some locations. You can see it's very likely, but lower end of the warning impact matrix. So not going to be too severe, but could cause flooding again on those areas that have been seen so much rainfall over the past couple of weeks. Now we've got three warnings further southwards. We start on this widespread wind warning covering much of South Wales and southern and eastern England. Now this is issued for 9pm until midnight on Thursday. So it's pretty much covering Storm Kieran. The AB warnings come into force in the early hours of Thursday morning. Uh, so it's all sort of for Storm Kieran, just uh, not quite overlapping into Wednesday, those amber warnings. You can see here it's very high impact, low likelihood as well, because there is so much uncertainty still on the exact track of the strongest winds. But we are, you know, we know roughly sort of, that it's in a sort of plus or minus 50 mile radius, and but that 50 miles could make the difference for some areas between 50, 60 mile per hour gusts and 80, 90 mile per hour gusts. For this widespread yellow warning, we're seeing 60 to 70 miles per hour for coastal areas, inland gusts may reach 50 to 60 miles per hour. English Channel coastal counties and a coastal strip may see 70 to 80 mile per hour gusts and maybe a small chance of 85 or even 90 miles per hour. Very large waves could also bring impacts to those coastal areas, especially to South Wales and southern England. We have this rain warning issued from 6 p.m. tomorrow until midnight on Thursday. Again, for all that heavy rain associated with uh, with uh, all that heavy rain associated with Storm Kieran there. Again, we're looking at 20 to 30 millimetres widely. 46 millimetres may accumulate in a number of places, especially but not exclusively over higher ground. Upper areas of southwest England and south and southwest Wales may see 80 millimetres of rain in a few locations. Again, with all the rain, winds blowing leaves away, potentially even blowing debris around and trees down could block drains and we could see those impacts exacerbated. And then we've got this rain and wind warning issued from 5am tomorrow until 9am tomorrow. So it is for some of the heavy rain we're seeing tonight. Uh, and again, we could see some uh, localised impacts across this southern and southeastern portion. Uh, and again, this is uh, primarily because we have seen quite a lot of heavy rain here over the past week. Again, a, a warning that probably wouldn't be issued generally uh, if we were in sort of a more settled spell and this spell of rain came along. Uh, this probably wouldn't have been issued, but it's because of the uh, saturated ground we've seen at the moment. But if we do move to Thursday, we now have even more warnings issued. Now we've got, uh, we'll cover the first, leave the rain warnings in the north, and then we'll have a look at those amber warnings. We've got a warning across Northern Ireland here from 6am on Thursday till midnight on Thursday, again for heavy rain. Uh, and you can see it is uh, relatively high impacts, but not the highest, low likelihood. Again, 10 to 20 millimetres, maybe 30 to 40. So very similar to the warning we're seeing through the rest of this evening. Uh, again, probably wouldn't be issued in normal times if we hadn't had such saturated ground but it, it still could cause some issues. We got a yellow rain warning for northern parts of Wales here for the whole of Thursday. Again, we're looking at 30 to 50 millimetres widely, maybe 60 to 80 millimetres. That's actually quite a lot of rainfall, and you can see it's high likelihood, lower end of the impact matrix. Again, primarily over the higher routes here across northern, uh, northern Wales, uh, as we are getting sort of Snowdonia there. But still, issues from that. And then another warning issued for the northeast coastal areas of England into southeast uh, way, uh, into southeast Scotland, sorry, from 6 a.m. Thursday and 6 a.m. on Friday. Uh, again, high, uh, relatively high impact, low likelihood, 20 to 30 millimetres widely, 40 to 60 millimetres over the highest ground. So if we do now have a look at those amber warnings, we've got, we'll start in the southwest. We've got this amber warning issued for the southern tip of Wales and for most of southwest England um, here for severe winds from 3 a.m. on Thursday until 1 p.m. on Thursday. Very strong northwesterly winds from Storm Kieran could 
uh, could bring it to, uh, travel to Shropshire. You see here, 70 to 80 mm, uh, miles per hour, sorry, uh, in coastal areas, a few coastal spots, maybe 85 miles per hour, maybe 90, 95 as possible, inland 65 to 75 miles per hour. A very sharp cutoff is expected regarding how far northeast these very high winds extend. The boundary is still uncertain. Again, Met Office here talking about that northern extent that we have continued to look at over the last couple of days. And this will be all dependent on the exact track, which hopefully gets pinpointed in the next 24 hours or so. Wind will gradually start to ease from mid-morning. Very large waves could bring additional impacts. Highest impact increasing in likelihood and then we have this second amber warning gonna have very similar impacts but the timings are slightly more delayed because uh, of course it's further eastwards so storm kieran arrives there slightly later starting at 6 a.m and storm kieran does move away quite quickly from the southwest but could linger a little bit further eastwards and on its back edge we could see those amber warning winds last until 8 p.m on thursday we're looking at 70 to 80 miles per hour in coastal areas, maybe exceeding 85 miles per hour. Again, pretty much the same as the warning in the southwest. Uh, and again, could see a red warning issued within this uh, if those risks or the likelihood of those risks increase tomorrow. At the moment, very high impact, increasingly uh, increasing likelihood. We still need to notch up two more and we would see a red warning. Again, the impact matrix is sometimes pretty confusing because it's difficult to explain that even though this isn't an amber warning, we could see impacts, danger to life impacts from it. So the likelihood isn't there at the moment because of the uncertainty in its track. Now, if you finish by having a look at Friday, you can see that warning across northeastern areas does continue. But I do suspect, having a look at the latest updates, as we'll see in a minute, actually, on the UKV, we could see warnings go into Friday and Saturday, especially for rainfall, but also potentially for gusty winds as well. So we're going to see another system move in on Saturday that we thought could potentially be named a few days ago, but it doesn't look too intense. It's downgraded slightly over the last couple of days, uh, but still could cause some issues. So if you do have a look at the latest UKV, you can see the rainfall moving in at the moment. It's getting heavy rain in places, but nothing too severe. A bit of a squall feature potentially on its back edge in places and snow across Scotland with the higher ground as we are seeing cold air entrench itself there. But for most, as we wake up into Wednesday morning, that rain will be mostly across Scotland and northern England now, maybe lingering across Northern Ireland and a few showers elsewhere, but generally not too bad. A few showers around tomorrow afternoon. You can see just to the bottom left of the screen, though, Storm Kieran arriving. And you can see big hook with its weather fronts arriving, bringing very heavy rain through much of Wednesday evening. Eventually, as it pushes in, we are going to see extremely heavy rain and then the very strong gusty winds on its southern edge. Now, the UKV takes the centre of the low pretty much parallel to the south of England here, moving right along the coast. And that means the strongest winds will be on the east and the western flanks across southwest England and southeast England. And that's why those amber warnings have been issued. You shift the centre of this low 50, 50 miles further northwards, maybe even 100 miles further northwards, you'd be looking at these very strong winds out in the channel across southern England. And that is where the uncertainty still lies. Through, through Thursday morning into the afternoon, it does clear, but it lingers across eastern England. That's why that amber warning persists into the afternoon, eventually clearing through the evening. And the rainfall does eventually peter out into Friday. And it does linger, Storm Kieran, but does lose a lot of its intensity into Friday. We see another system arrive for Saturday. Again, could see some gusty winds and more heavy rain into Saturday morning for that. But again, it doesn't look anywhere near as severe as Kieran is going to be through Thursday. Now, if you look at the wind gusts, as we head through Wednesday evening, you can see the very strong winds starting to arrive there through Wednesday night. 70 miles per hour, 80 miles per hour on its leading edge, but it really gets going through the early hours of Thursday. Now, you can see where the centre of the low is, very weak winds. The east, look at that, southeast England, widely 40, 50, 60 miles per hour, locally 70 to 80. And actually, from this latest UKB, the southwest probably would warrant a red warning for this. Looking at that, 80, 90 miles per hour coming for much of the southwest tip there, much of Cornwall. You can see the strongest winds, though, because the centre of the low here is positioned just on the south coast. is actually going into the Channel Islands, down into northern France. Those winds do eventually shift further northwards into the afternoon. That's why that amber warning persists into the afternoon for southeastern areas. We could see another swathe of 70, 80 mile per hour winds after a little bit of a lull through lunchtime. 
and then eventually it does wind down and into Sasse. Could see another spell of gusty winds coming in there off the Atlantic, but nothing more than 40 or 50 miles per hour at this stage. We'll whisk through the temperatures as well, getting there fairly static over the next few days, generally around average or slightly below average, but we'll cover it nonetheless. Now you can see here, Wednesday afternoon, still cold across much of Scotland, the cold air is still in, but most areas low teens here. Into Thursday afternoon, a bit of uh, Thursday morning, sorry, a bit of a frost in northern areas. But by Thursday afternoon, it's actually pretty cold. The temperatures aren't actually too bad at the upper air level, but the surface is miserable with all that wind, all that rain and cloud around from Storm Kieran. Most areas won't get above seven to nine degrees. Into Friday, again another similar picture. Temperatures slightly higher as we start to see that rain ease a bit more around the nine to eleven degrees. On Saturday, got a big split as Storm Kieran pulls away, just starts to put a little bit of a northerly flow in. And again, that will draw some colder air in, but we're looking at mid to high single digits in the north, maybe 10 to 12 degrees in the south. And then finally into Sunday, generally average to more below average around that. Again, 9 to maybe as high as 12 degrees. Now we'll have a look now at all the other wind charts from the various models we won't have a look at these the longer range charts today as we'll primarily concentrate on storm kieran we'll probably have a look at those again on friday probably the next sort of couple of days we will concentrate mainly on storm kieran as and its impact there's nothing too crazy is going on in the medium term so just to make sure the videos don't drag on for too long we'll primarily concentrate on the uh, issue at hand if we do have a look at the Arpege, if we do run to Wednesday evening now, you can see Storm Kieran approaching 70, 80 miles per hour on its leading edge, eventually arriving. And you see those stronger winds are slightly further northwards, impacting more of the south coast with those 50 to 70 mile per hour winds, but smashing southwest England, much of southwest England here, and much of southeast England, even extending into East Anglia in the London area for those 60, 70 mile per hour winds. Eventually, as it clears, giving another spell of 60, 70 miles per hour, even coming quite far inland there through Thursday afternoon, eventually clearing away into the evening. So the Arpege is very, very strong, as strong as the UK V, but it does have it slightly further north. It's maybe only by a few tens of miles, not enough to bring those 90 or 100 mile per hour winds towards the Isle of Wight and the far south coast, but enough to impact more of the southeast England, impact even East Anglia, impact southwest England and impact central southern England more. I think the best way really when we have a look at these wind charts to look at where the exact centre of the low is, is looking at that zero or very low wind gusts. And you can see that from the lighter green hit. That's where the centre of the low is. On the UK V we saw it was tracking the south coast. Here it's tracking kind of halfway between the south coast and the M4 line, or maybe more towards the M4 line there, which goes from sort of Bristol all the way to London. So the centre of the low is more towards there, and that does draw those stronger winds or form them much further northwards. Now, if you have a look at the Icon Run, this only does three-hour increments, unfortunately, but still uh, gives us a good indication of what's going to go on, or what it thinks is going to go on. Very strong winds for southwest England, for southeast England, but interestingly, again, the centre of the low is slightly further southwards, but still very strong winds across that south coast and the southeast portion through Thursday afternoon. Just not quite as strong with those 90, 100-mile-per-hour winds, more towards northern France and the Channel Islands, more towards the UK V there. If we do compare here to the Rome run, this is a very high resolution run, uh, some run regard is the best for having a look at storms and thunderstorms and things like that, that's what we normally use, but only has a very short lead time unfortunately. So it only goes out to the early hours of Thursday, so we won't be able to have a look at Thursday afternoon where we could see another batch for the southeast, but it will show the initial approach of Storm Kieran. See it arriving, giving widely sort of 60, 70 mile per hour winds on its leading edge, eventually arriving, and it is pretty similar to the UKV, maybe slightly further northwards, more on board with sort of the icon was showing, strongest winds, as said, towards the channel, and towards northern France, but very strong winds for southwest England and very strong winds for southeast England. We do have to remember though, when we are looking at these wind speeds, you can see there is a big drop off as soon as you go inland. And that is because, of course, over sea, there's no resistance, no buildings, there's no hills taking away those wind speeds. So it's inevitable. The wind gusts over the, uh, the Channel and over the Irish Sea and into the North Sea are always going to be a little bit stronger, always 10, 20% stronger than they would be over land. So we're looking at 100 mile per hour out to sea, probably wouldn't be 100 miles per hour if that same pattern was over land, probably more would be 
80 or 90 miles per hour. So we have to do remember that. And that is why uh, so these darker greys and these very light purples here and pinks never really make it on land here from the from the uh, the Arome run, simply because uh, it, it is almost impossible because these are out to sea sort of values. But you can see the max winds down at the bottom right showing around 150 kilometers per hour, which is about 95 miles per hour on its approach. Uh, again, we're not probably looking at that inland, but for coastal areas and out to sea, that is very possible and pretty likely from the state of a lot of these models. Now, if you have a look at the GFS now, these are slightly low resolution, the GFS and the Eastern WF will have a look now, but they have been in more of an agreement and have been looking at it for more days. So we have got a bit more uh, knowledge of what these have been showing in their trends. Now, the GFS went a lot further northwards yesterday with some severe winds inland. It'll be interesting to see what it's showing today. Now, as with Storm Kieran approaches, very strong winds on its leading edge. That is one thing that is very apparent here. Much of Kent, southeast England, even into London, getting smashed up towards the east coast. And then much of southwest England as well. Very strong winds just skirting the south coast there. Very similar to the UKV, but it's sh the shape of the centre of the low is slightly different, which allows those stronger winds to be slightly further northwards. This is uh, pretty severe, uh, slightly further southwards than it was showing yesterday. But nevertheless, you can see where the extremely strong winds are, southwest England, southeast England, and just skirting that south coast as the centre of the low goes past. And giving a very strong batch of winds on its back edge. We're looking at here, 107 kilometers per hour, which is around 60 or 70 mile per hour max wind gusts. And you can see even coming quite far inland across central England here. So really do need to keep an eye out for that through Thursday. Now, finally, this last chart we'll have a look at in today's video. So don't want this video to go on for too long. It's the latest ECM. I think another run we've had a look at in a lot of detail over the last few days and have been following its trends. As we do progress through Wednesday evening, you see Storm Kieran approach from the southwest. Very strong winds across much of southern England here, much along the, along the south coast here of 80 miles, 90 miles per hour on its, uh, on its approach. So this is not even the positioning of the low. This is more to do with the initial wind gusts on its leading edge. Very strong indeed. Then as it approaches slightly further uh, northwards, actually, then a lot of the short range ones was growing, uh, showing extreme winds across the southeast, extreme winds across the southwest, and the south coast just about getting peppered before the winds do start to die down. So, an extremely severe system we're looking at over the next 48 hours or so. Still, some uncertainty for that sort of central southern coastal areas, how bad those winds are going to be. But it's looking pretty likely now that southeast England, maybe into East Anglia, even into parts of southeast London, perhaps that's sort of the northern extent of this area, and then across much of southwest England and South Wales, we're going to see widespread 70 to 80 mile per hour winds. That's even coming quite far inland, and then coastal areas. 90 miles per hour is looking pretty likely. So I wouldn't be surprised if those amber warnings got slightly adjusted tomorrow, uh, depending on the overnight runs, maybe even enlarged slightly to include more of East Anglia, maybe include more of Southwest England and more of Southeast England. And I do think there is, is even a possibility if all the models come out tomorrow uh, with a very strong consensus that we could even see a red warning issued maybe across that far tip of Cornwall, and maybe for South East England as well, given the higher population density uh, and lack of preparedness, really, for these strong winds. It's quite unusual to be seeing these extremely strong winds across the South East. Um, so we will have to see exactly what happens tomorrow, but I'll have another update out, uh, perhaps even one in the morning looking at the latest runs, but I'll definitely have one out in the evening, probably a little bit later tomorrow, maybe 9 or 10 p.m. have a, uh, an update out. I'll have a look at the latest weather warnings and the last look at the model before Storm Kieran does arrive. So as I said, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. Make sure you stay safe out there over the next couple of days and make sure you heed those warnings. And I'll see you again for another video soon.